What up YouTube, Salvador Brigman here, and today we're talking about how do you decide on what topic you should write about your blog. And my, my lighting here for this video is kind of interesting. I feel like I'm like in the dark side, in the light side. The light is like reflecting off of the building behind this camera, so it might seem a little bit strange here. I might play with this throughout the video. Um, but I wanna, I wanna get into this topic. I really wanna seriously address it because it, this is something that if you're thinking of starting a blog, usually what's stopping you is like, I don't know if I should write about this topic or not. Like I don't know if I should spend the time to really commit a year of my life commit you know, six months of my life to writing on this topic if I don't know if it's gonna go anywhere. Is this, am I even passionate about this thing? Like that is something that many beginning bloggers struggle with. And that's why I wanted to make this video for you. Um, this is something that for me, I also struggled with when I was getting started. I didn't know if I should write about this topic. I didn't know, I, didn't, I quite frankly, I didn't really think that I was going to be blogging about the crowdfunding industry or even the podcasting industry or these different blogs I've started. I didn't think I was gonna be doing it for as long as I have. So it's kind of weird, but at the same time, I have thought a little bit more about what actually goes into choosing a topic. So I wanna share some of that stuff with you, and no matter where you are in this process, I think it is going to be helpful, particularly if you are in those beginning stages, so you have an idea of maybe I'll write about this, maybe I'll write about that. So I, as I was getting started, you know, I tried out a few different blogging ideas previously. I tried out starting different personal blogs, starting other blogs that are about other topics, and they never really worked out. None of them actually caught on. The first personal blog I had, I wrote in high school because I was very introverted. I was very emo. I was very um, just in my head a lot. Like I had a lot of thoughts and I, I would always journal a lot. I would always write these down and write like short stories and sometimes just write down my own thoughts, kind of like mini blog posts, but they were just in writing and I would keep them in my journal. So I decided to start this personal blog because I was like, hey, I can actually share this with the world. I don't think anyone's gonna read it, but you know, it'd be cool to try it out. So I did that, you know, I started this personal blog and lo and behold, people did check it out over time. But the problem with this strategy was I was writing about like so many different topics that it was just like this weird hodgepodge of different topics, different genres, different industries, and it didn't really add up to anything. Uh, I didn't really end up doing anything with this blog and I ended up closing it down when I got into later of college. So it didn't go anywhere, but that's because it was like a personal blog. I wasn't trying to earn income with this. I wasn't trying to make this my full-time gig or you know what I was going to earn a full-time income from. It was just kind of for fun. It was like a hobby. So the first thing is you don't want to start a blog based off of, oh, I'm going to write about this topic and that topic and this topic. You want to have a focus. You want to have an overlying framework or an overlying message or an overlying topic that you're going to be writing about. Not just some broad category of like, I'm going to be writing about music and I'm going to be writing about business and I'm going to be writing about sports and I'm going to be writing about dance and theater and like these different things. That's not the recipe for success. Now the second thing, the second thing I struggled with is, wow, it would be really profitable if I wrote a blog on this subject. Like I should write a dating blog or about New York City dating stories. Or I should write a blog about this kind of cool business that I want to start and why this is going to transform America. I should start a finance blog. I should start a blog on this or that. And what you kind of realize is there's so much opportunity out there. And late at night, or maybe while after you've had a cup of coffee, or, or, or late at night you're, you're thinking it's like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. and you're reading up on the finance industry or Bitcoin or something like that. And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna start a blog. It's gonna be about Bitcoin, it's gonna be awesome. You register the domain name and then you don't do anything with it. You've, you've built up this like emotion inside your body and you're so excited and you start it and it just doesn't continue, it just kind of fizzles out. That's another thing that happens with bloggers. So the lesson here is you wanna start something that you're consistently passionate about or that you're consistently thinking about on an ongoing basis. Something that for, uh, you know, I would say that a blog that I started that just didn't go anywhere was this blog called Full-Time Passion. So Full-Time Passion, the idea was that I wanted to write more about how our generation, like our generation of millennials, or people that are, I would say 20 to like 35, they can now go full-time on their passion, whatever it is. It was a very broad category. I had this idea when I was having coffee with my friend, I was like, this would be such a cool blog idea. 
The problem was that I wasn't passionate enough about the subject and I had only been thinking about this for a very short period of time. Like this wasn't a recurring thought in my mind. It wasn't something that I wanted to stick with after I wrote a couple of articles. I just kind of lost interest. For me, the formula, the reason why I've been successful with blogging is to really understand the topics that continue to maintain my interest over time. So one example of that topic, crowdfunding, I've been interested in this topic since 2012, so it's been six years since I've been in writing and interested in this topic. And it's still very curiosity invoking for me today. I still, like it's curiosity invoking, it sounds like a, such a robotic way to say it, but it, it just, it, it piques my curiosity still today. Um, it, it's, it's still, I'm learning a tremendous amount within this industry and this niche, so I still love the topic of crowdfunding. So that's an example of something that I'm willing to write about for like two to three years. So if you can pick a topic that you think you will still be interested in over the next year to two to three years, that is a good topic to start a blog on. Now this is kind of like, what I'm about to say is contradictory. It's contradictory to what I just said. <laughs> the, the, the hallmark of online business success and really being able to achieve things is to hold two contradictory views in your mind at the same time. So what is a contradictory view? The, the contradictory view that I want you to hold in your mind or at least think about is, on the one hand, you have to be willing to write about this topic for like two to three years. Like it has to be that interesting to you that you can envision yourself writing, talking, learning, and speaking about this topic for the next two years. On the flip side, you have to be willing to try things out. Because I know if you ask me, hey Sal, are you going to be interested in crowdfunding for the next six years, and I was in, high, I was in uh, college, I'd probably be like, no, probably not. I was interested, but I didn't realize the degree and level with, with, that my interest went to, or the deepness, the depth of my interest. So when I started to actually write, you know, I just kind of did it. I was like, oh, this, this is a really cool topic. Like, I want to start talking about this. I want to discuss this. I started a blog on the subject. But as I went and as I started to write more and more articles, I realized that I had a much stronger curiosity for the topic than I realized, than I, than I originally thought at least. So by, by trying things out, having a healthy dose of, yes, I'm willing to write you know, a year, for a year about this topic. And also, yes, I'm willing to try things out as well and to see if I like them or not. That, that's sort of like holding these two perspectives in your mind is a good strategy for going out there and deciding what type of a topic that you should write on and what, what, what's one that's going to stick with you and stay with you. Now the final one, these are the first two that kind of go with the artist side of the brain. If you're, you're more of like a creative type or an artist type, uh, I think these, these are going to, the first ones will resonate more with you. You have to do something that you're passionate about, you have to do something that you're interested in, something that's going to maintain your curiosity over time. The next one is more of the business aspect. You have to write about a topic whose readers are valuable whose readers can spend money and buy products, whose readers are willing to be, advertisers are willing to reach those readers with advertising dollars because those readers are willing to spend money to solve their problems to some degree or some fashion. If you go after a niche or an industry whose readers don't really have any money to spend, let's just say like teenagers or something like that, it's gonna be harder to make money from that blog. Now, if you have a blog, let's just say it's getting a million views, and most of those views are from teenagers who discovered your articles on Facebook, it's gonna be a little bit harder to build a business out of that because they don't have very much money to spend. Now, if you have the same blog, let's just say visited by 50,000 people, and most of these people are executives, CEOs, you know, they have big businesses that they're running, and they're looking for ways to solve problems, it's gonna be easier to make a business out of that because of the readers. People are willing to pay money to reach that demographic because that demographic has money. That demographic understands the problems they have and wants to use money to, to get solutions to those problems. So that's the next question to ask yourself. When you're putting together this, this, this idea or this topic in your mind, consider these three pillars. What are you passionate about? You know, how long have you been thinking about it? Is it just an idea you had with your friends over a beer or over coffee? Or is it something you've been continuing to think about over time? Are you willing to try it out? Are you willing to actually 
write a blog post, write a couple blog posts, see how they do, see what kind of response you get. That's, that's really the only way you're ever going to know if this is a good topic to write about. Because you can intellectualize, you can think about it all the time, but you're not gonna really know until you have content out there online. And finally, have you considered how you will make money from this industry? Are other people already making money? Are there products in the industry? How are other people that are blogging or are reaching these readers, how are they earning income? That is the last pillar when it comes to choosing a topic for your blog. Now there are other things to consider. There are proven industries, proven topics, and proven niches that are actually, I would say, it's easier to earn money when you're writing a blog in one of these, under one of these subjects or under one of these topics. So I talk a bit about that in my book, Blogging for Beginners. So this book not only goes into some of these topics and sort of invites you to explore what you might want to write about and goes into things like, okay, if you're going to be writing about this and it falls under this category, then it's a good idea to start a blog in that niche. So we'll talk about the industries and the niches and different blog ideas, but it will also give you the proven framework for getting traffic, growing your subscriber base, earning more income, all these different things that go along, go hand in hand with starting a blog you will learn in blogging for beginners. I really wrote this for the beginning blogger, someone who's just now getting started. It's okay if you already have a blog, I'll teach you how to get even more traffic to it and decide whether or not this is something you wanna continue with. And for those, those newbies out there in the audience, I'll also show you step-by-step step how to set up a blog, how to get started, and really how to get your first subscribers and your first traffic to the website. So if you wanna check this out, it's at the link in the description of this YouTube video. I will link you up there. It's available on Amazon. Always would appreciate a review as well if you've already picked up a copy. But again, my name is Sal. I hope that this video has been helpful for you as you've been trying to figure out and wrestle with that idea that you wanna start writing about. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments down below. Happy to answer one or two. But again, my name is Sal and I'll see you next time.